Hello all you little warriors out there. I'm Steve, and if you watched our Asana Wana episode recently, you know that I spent a lot of time making that custom tabletop with the goal of having it being as accurate and attractive as possible. Well, in today's terrain tutorial, I'm going to show you just how I went about making that table, because it's a little different than the way we've done things in the past. For the first phase of construction, I used six 2 foot by 2 foot pink foam project panels for the table base, additional sheets of the thinnest insulation foam I could find, wood glue, drywall joint compound, and a sharp knife. Since I wanted the map to be accurate at 1 inch equaling 60 yards, I also sourced a good topographical map of the battlefield. Step 1 was taking the thin sheets of foam and, using a gridded version of the topographical map, cutting them into the shape of the topographical layers that are on the map. I then coat the bottom of each layer with wood glue, since I find it works best on this type of pink foam, and build up each layer. When I was done, I had a 3D version of the topographical map. I then use the drywall joint compound to smooth out the layer transitions and give the terrain a rolling contour. The added weight of the compound also added to the board's stability while still keeping the weight manageable. When the compound dried, it was easy to sand down any ridges and fine tune those contours. I then used a rasp and some sandpaper to carve out the paths of the dongas. For the second phase of construction, I again used wood glue, but this time I added a gallon of latex paint and enough fusible polyester quilters batting to cover the boards and wrap a little bit around underneath. The batting should be as thin as you can find, but doesn't necessarily have to be fusible. I just like the texture of the fusible batting a little more. Again using the wood glue, I affix the batting to every inch of the boards except the dongas and the rocky top of Isandlwana itself. Once the glue was dry, I took some scissors and cut out those dongas, as we'll be texturing them in a different way later. Lastly for this phase, I painted everything except Isandlwana, my preferred brown base color for this board. For the final phase of construction, I used a wide variety of flock and static grass, various types of talus, multicolored paver sand, and white glue. After making a 50-50 mix of white glue and water, I liberally brushed the mixture over the entire gaming surface, except for the dongas and Asandlwana itself, before shaking flock and static grass over it until I achieved the overall look I wanted. After brushing the excess flock out of the dongas, I then brushed the glue and water mix down their entire length and sprinkled in the paver sand on top. After giving the dongas some time to dry, I then brushed a second layer of the glue water mixture over the sand to fix it in place. Now I was just down to the final touches. First, the lone road running across the table. Just like with the dongas, except this time on top of the painted batting, I used the glue water mixture to construct the road with paver sand. Don't forget the top layer of glue, since that prevents the sand from going all over the place as soon as you try and move the board. Once that was dry, I then painted the road a nice darker brown. Finally, it was time for Asandlwana itself. While the shaping was done way back when we were messing around with the drywall joint compound, it was at the end when I painted the rock, used the talus to mask the edge of the quilter's batting, and then glued some flock to the top. And that's it! As I mentioned in the Asandlwana episode itself, this is the most work I've ever put into a tabletop and I'm really happy with my results. If you decide to use this method for your own battlefields, be sure to send along your results as we'd love to see them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.